pretty. Let's clap for her. <laughs> we appreciate our pianists and our organists and everybody, and I think sometimes we forget. So thank you so much. What a beautiful song that was. So welcome, everybody, to Redeemer this morning. Uh, what a beautiful morning to worship. Just a reminder, most of you know, our pastor is gone this morning. And I'm working, and John is working, and it's, it's, took, it's taken about six people to replace him, so you can tell him that. <laughs> we will miss him. But we have a good replacement this morning. We have Pastor Buck speaking. I know many of you have heard him before, and we're in for a good message. We had prayer together before we started. This man is filled with the Spirit, folks. And he's got a message for you this morning. So we're so glad to have you, Pastor Buck, and your beautiful wife. Thank you for coming. Uh, other announcements this morning. The summer is gone. And in two weeks, we're going to start our new fall schedule. Can hardly believe how fast it went. That means Sunday school starts in two weeks, too. We really want to pray for those kids this morning. You know, there's an attack in this country against our children. In the world, there's an attack against the children. And places like this are so important to, that we hold our children up and that we guide these children. And I want to say for those of you that have children that might be going to Sunday school, they don't have to belong to this church to go to our Sunday school. All children are welcome in our Sunday school. So if you know somebody that you think would like to go to Sunday school, be sure and ask them and tell them that it is open to them too. And then of course for our leaders too. Uh, Laura Trum is doing a wonderful job of leading that, but that will be starting. So also in two weeks, we're back to the old schedule. We're back to the old schedule again. We've got a, a, some other things that are coming up. One I want to remind you uh, that Carol Lipke's Hebrew study is starting right Carol on the 11th of September and she needs people to get signed up if you haven't gone to these Bible studies they're tremendous she does a tremendous job sign up because she needs to know how many books to order so sign up with Carol Carol do you have a sign up in the back okay sign up in the back and then of course her other Bible studies will be starting in just a minute I'm going to have Brad come up and talk and talk about that um, and then we have a real treat this morning. We have the two missionaries that we've helped support from Mexico, Todd and Barb. Stand up a minute. You're going to, okay, he's going to give us a messy, a little greeting in a little bit too, but that's wonderful. I mean, being missionaries in Mexico, what a challenge. And we are, we are so glad that you joined us this morning also. Uh, any other messages or announcements that we're missing here this morning if not i'm going to call brad up for a minute to just just share a little bit okay good morning everybody In just a couple of weeks our congregation is going to be uh, embarking on a a, a new chapter in, in our uh, family here at Redeemer. We're going to be starting a small group ministries. We'll be starting out with a uh, Bible study. Um, and uh, I just looked. I've seen a lot of people signing up in the back for several of these uh, different um, groups, and that's great. I did want to talk to um, the people that maybe haven't and that are hearing a little voice say, gee, I should sign up, but I've got, I'm nervous about meeting in a small group with somebody, or maybe I, I don't know my Bible good enough, or maybe uh, they're going to make me talk or put me on the spot. And I just want to assure everybody that that's not the case. This is a place where we're going to get together and be in the Spirit of the Lord and the, the Holy Spirit, um, share with each other, we're definitely going to learn, um, um, but we're going to share with each other and, and grow in faith and friendship. And I just want to encourage everybody to, to pray about it um, uh, and just really consider it. It, it. 
we went through it as a the leadership last winter and I feel like my life has changed my relationship with the people in the small group has grown and I just want to make sure that everybody has a chance to do that so um, this, we're going to be moving forward in this and I'd like everybody to to be a part of it so uh, I encourage you to read the pastor's message in the bulletin about it it's it, it goes into more detail so uh, please Pray about it, and I encourage you to sign up for it. Thank you. And thank you, Brad, for being such a vital part of this. Uh, again, as I said, we're concerned about our youth. We're supporting our Sunday school. I want to take this time to thank everybody who supported the kids on their trip this summer. They had a very spiritual, great time in Colorado, so thank you so much. And a lot of you ordered t-shirts in support of that trip, and I'm here to tell you the t-shirts are here today. They're in the back. I've already picked mine up, so they look great. So uh, when you leave today, be sure you go pick up your shirts. And Myrene, they're right in the back along the side of the wall. Is that right? Okay, so pick up your t-shirt if you ordered a, a t-shirt. Then today, another special privilege we have is that we have our missionaries with them, and Todd is just going to give a brief little talk about what's going on in Mexico. Okay, Todd. Good morning to all of you. It's uh, really a privilege for us to be here and to get in on Pastor Buck's message. I'm really grateful for that. Um, Barb and I are up here in the United States. Just for a short time, just for the month of August, here to kind of clear our heads a little bit. These have been some intense uh, months for us down in Mexico, as you may or may not know just about some of the situations that have taken place down there. But um, the, uh, there were four significantly intense uh, months that we had, and we had to cancel our kids' club for, for a while because of the, the situation in, in, in town. But I want to uh, share with you an answered prayer in the middle of all of that. Um, we, our, our church building is the size of a, a one-car garage, and uh, we've got three of them strung together. There are three of those little local places, uh, like a strip mall kind of a thing. And uh, right across the alleyway, the street the size of an alley, is a big house. And sometime last year, the owner of the house came in her walker uh, to talk to me after our church service, and she insisted that I come and see her house. And it's a big house and big yard. They got fruit trees in the in the yard, and they have a, have a uh, like a, a fireplace uh, where you can do barbecues and whatnot in the backyard and everything. And she just brought me in, gave me the tour of the whole house. She said, "This place, I think you should rent this house um, because it would just be great for a church." And I looked and I said, "Well, yeah, it would be, but it's way huge for our." wee little group <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I, I just I didn't want to encourage her too much or anything like that so she was uh, insistent on that I told her that the, the rent was going to be a lot of money and I just didn't think our little little group was going to was uh, going to feel confident about that so anyway uh, she sent us a great piece of cake home to persuade us uh, that it, it, it didn't it didn't work uh, but, uh, but the reason I tell you that is because uh, she and her husband had to move out of their house. Uh, they were at, at that time in life, they moved in with uh, kids in the, in the city, in, in, in town, in the downtown. And what I didn't know at the time is that um, a, one of the drug cartels that are active in our uh, community came in and took over the house. And, and, and there was not a problem, they, there wasn't any problem with, with, uh, that they were causing or anything like that. I wasn't even really aware of it as I thought about it. Um, but uh, we um, were gone for a, a trip to visit a, a new church in Puerto Rico that we have and came back and realized that uh, they'd installed a security camera right there on the corner. And so we, Barb and I, when we'd pull up to the church and park right in front of our little, our little spot there, we were parking right in the security camera view and realized as we were walking around, there we were for, for them, 
and all of the kids were going to be coming and uh, coming right into the camera view and everything like that. And we just really felt uncomfortable in our spirits about, about that to the point where we just felt like we had to either, we just had to ask God right away that Sunday, Barb and I just began to pray right there that God would either find us a new place to meet um, or else that he'd get that group uh, out of that house and get somebody else in there uh, for Doña Rebecca, who was the, the owner of the house. Uh, that was Sunday. And Monday, I went over to see the, one of the leading uh, leaders uh, in our church, uh, Celia is her name, and shared with her the same thing. Uh, would she kind of be on the lookout for a new place for us to, to find, to, to rent, uh, for our church to meet? Uh, or and pray, or that God would get that group out of out of the house. Um, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, the one of the main families that comes to our Bible study wasn't able to make it, so we only had Fernando. It was just Fernando and me that were there, and so Fernando and I were talking and praying about this. Uh, we spent some time in prayer again, that God would either find us a new place to to meet, or that He get that group out of the house. It was six o'clock on Wednesday night when Fernando and I finished praying. Seven, eight, nine, at 9.30 that night. The other group that's also active in our community, the rival group, came and threw a grenade over the wall and started a half-hour gun battle uh, that finally was ended when the military came in and got that group out of the house. That was one of the most stunning answers to prayer I have ever <laughs> received. And I, I, it kind of left us with our jaws hanging on the floor, just our mouths wide open. And it did two, three, I suppose, two important things. One, for me and for Barb, it made us know, and for our little church too, that we, we all know that we, his eye is on the sparrow and we know he's watching us, but boy, we knew his eye was right on us, right on us. And um, that was important for us to know also because in that situation that we are down there, boy, sometimes you just, we've had to over the last 10 years just assess and reassess and kind of take stock of where we are and what our lines are. Um, and, uh, and so that was important for, for me to know, for Barb to know that God is, his spirit is active and working and um, we're not just being fools, <laughs> if you will. Um, and so that was tremendously important for, for us as well. And it made us also know, uh, again, we, we know so many people are so grateful to you for your prayers for us and uh, for your generous, um, faithful support for our ministry. Um, but boy, to know that God's hearing all of your prayers for us in that moment, right at that moment at nine at six o'clock if you will or from sunday monday and at six o'clock and then he sent uh, it's almost as if he sent the devil to go accomplish the work in a sense and it made us to know too that uh, just a reminder that god and satan are not equal and opposite forces satan has to do what god tells him to do um, and and that's what he did so we were able to start our kids club up again in March, um, and uh, we're really, really grateful for that. Uh, if you get a chance, I don't know if uh, the, the, I, we have a little slide, a few slides there, but I got in touch with um, a painter who came, and I wasn't sure he painted a, a new uh, church sign on the front of our little uh, building. Un lugar de encuentro con Dios, a place to meet with God. And then I just, uh, on a whim, kind of, I'd had it in my mind for a time, but I asked him about what he thought about painting a, I, I didn't know how big, but some kind of a picture on the side of the, of the church building of the empty tomb. Uh, and we put up top, there's uh, uh, Miguel, his name is Michelangelo, above all things. <laughs> In Spanish, really, it's Miguel Angel. 
Um, I, I just couldn't believe it. Uh, I said I, want, I wanted to create something that would make people when they come by that they would feel like they're in the tomb and they want to get out of it. Um, and, and, and so he looked, he looked, and I didn't know how big, I, you know, like this, or I, I didn't know. Ended up being eight feet high and ten feet wide. Just a huge mural. He had so many people stopping to look at it when he was painting. I told him we laughed together. I said, we're going to have to put a speed bump in here to, so the people are going to have car accidents uh, <laughs> if they are looking at what you're doing and not paying attention to the road. And one of the precious things there, as you see the, the, uh, the linen cloth there that he, he painted, uh, he's not uh, an active believer himself. But it was really, we had so many conversations. I picked him up in the morning and dropped him off in the afternoon. Um, and, and we had so many conversations about that story that he was painting. And at the top of it, he painted, This I call to mind, therefore I have hope from Lamentations. And on the one side, but God demonstrates his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And the other side, uh, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Um, and uh, so he, I directed him to John 20 to figure out how to draw the linen there. And I said, well, you probably just need to read that story yourself so that you can figure out, and you paint what you read, finally. Because we were trying to, he was trying to figure out how to paint the, the linen cloth with a headpiece uh, somehow separate and whatnot. So you just, you just read the story yourself and you paint what it is that you read. So he finished the painting and there it is. And I just... Uh, um, just praising God for the light because the Lord is our light and our salvation. He brought light and we pray that that would be a light for a lot of people in our little town and our church who have experienced a lot of darkness, heaviness, and a reminder that um, there's nothing Satan can do uh, that can keep either his son or his church inside that tomb. Um, so, thank you so much for your prayers for us. God bless you. Wow, what a story. It's just a reminder that uh, our missionaries are living in some, dangerous, in some dangerous areas. And bless you, we will continue to keep you, continue to keep you in our prayers. Um, this morning, your invocation is in, any other announcements that we missed? Okay. The invocation this morning is from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters under the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created, and he established them forever and ever, and he issued a decree that they would never pass away. Thank you, Father, for your creation, and thank you for making us a part of your creation, and that we are a part of it forever. Amen. Follow me with the confession of sins as printed in your bulletin. Gracious and loving God, you are always present with us. Your faithfulness knows no limits. You call us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Yet far too often we're just going through the motions. Our minds focus on other matters. What seems urgent at the time distracts us. Forgive us for our casual attitudes. Remind us of the importance of praising your name, hearing your word, and enjoying your presence. We ask that you would forgive our sin and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Guide us into a spirit of true worship. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the absolution for our sins today is found in Nehemiah 9.17. You are a God ready to forgive, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. You have not forsaken us. What a promise. 
So we'll sing a couple of songs and then we'll come back for the prayers of the church, okay? Those are a couple of God's songs to put you in the mind for worship. And a very important part of the church are the prayers of the church. And we're going to do those now. And I, Pastor Buck, when I looked at the message of your sermon, Hearing Matters, I tell you I had to chuckle because those of you that know me, you know my hearing is just not what it used to be 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 80 years ago. <laughs> uh, so I, I've got a little hearing aid today not only here, but Marsha is going to come up and be my ears. She's done this for us before. She's very faithful. So we've got some special prayers that we are going to pray, uh, but then we also will want a chance if there's some extras that you want to pray. So we will we'll start with some prayers. These are the ones I have so far. Many of you know that Pastor Gilman's little 11-year-old grandson has a serious eye infection and had to be admitted to uh, emergency room a couple of times for antibiotics. He's scared about losing his eyes. And Pastor Tom said, so are his parents. So we need to pray fervently for little Isaac today that that eye would be saved. Any update on that? So it's improving? Absolutely, thank you, Jesus. And he's home. He's home. See my ears here. <laughs> she did that for me in many years. I keep still do it. Uh, then we want to pray for Shirley Rankin. She's in the swing bed now and recovering. Anybody have an update on her? Um, and Ben Camp. Okay, update on Shirley.
released from the hospital in the last week. Released from the hospital on she, Wednesday. Oh, so she's home. No, she's going to be. She's going to be on Wednesday. Okay, see if she's going to be. I love you, Marsha. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then Ben Campen, who's had a, the accident a long time ago, has had a surgery, didn't work. He's had another surgery, and he had surgery this week, so we need to pray for his recovery. Any, are the Campens here? Any update on Ben? He's better. Okay. Well, well we need to pray for further rec complete recovery. And then I would ask prayers for our young grandson again, Josh Newman, who's you know recently been diagnosed with MS and struggling and getting some treatments. And we're just praying for healing for him. He's very, very fatigued all the time. So just pray for a renewal of his strength. And pray for Israel. You know, we're commanded to pray for Israel. Those that bless you, I'll bless. Those that curse you, I will curse. So we not only pray for Israel, it's for our own benefit also when we pray for blessings. We are blessed when we pray for Israel. And of course the Sunday school teachers and the Sunday school and then our two pastors that are here today, Pastor Buck, we pray for his service and Pastor Todd and his wife for their good work. Now, some others that we have, Marsha will take notes for me. Carla. And she, your little granddaughter is a new diabetic, right? So we'll pray for that. We will definitely. Any other prayers today? Myrene. Myrene. Angie's. Angie's birthday. Happy birthday, Angie. <laughs> I wouldn't even ask your age. <laughs> I know you're younger than me, so I'm <laughs> wonderful. Any other needs? Okay. Another birthday. Okay. Jen's. Jen's. Jen's birthday. Yay. Yay. We're just grateful for all those birthdays. Okay, Pam. Yes, our nation needs our prayers. And believe me, our, our nation was founded on prayers. You may have heard, when they wrote our Constitution, they couldn't agree on anything. They would hours trying to figure out how to write our Constitution. Finally, Benjamin Franklin said, we need to have the pastors here, we need to take a break, and we need to pray. So they prayed, and they wrote our wonderful Constitution. There's not another one like it in the whole world. So. We need to pray that we would go back to some of that faith of our fathers. Any others? Look at, yes. People who do not believe. What? People who do not believe. Yes, she's saying we need to pray for the unsaved. Uh, we really do, you know. Our, even church attendance in our country has just diminished greatly, particularly after, the, after COVID. So we need to pray that there will be a renewal. Now, you know how I pray. I want you all to join in in the prayer. So I will say the prayer, and then I will say, uh, Lord, have mercy, and give you a chance for a silent prayer on whatever the thing is. And then Marsha will lead the response, here is Lord. So we've done this many times. So we're going to do it again. Okay, Marsha, you can lead the response. Heavenly Father, we do come to you in prayer. If we come to you as ch your children, what a great thing that we can come right to your throne room with our concerns right here in Canton, South Dakota this morning. And you are with us and you are listening. First of all, pray a blessing on Pastor Buck and Pastor Todd and his wife and the work they do, Lord. Continue to strengthen them. Thank you that your spirit is keeping them safe and watching over them. Would everybody please say a silent prayer for the pastors that are here this morning. Lord, in your mercy. 
And then we pray for little Isaac Gilman, 11 years old, with such a serious eye problem. We are grateful for the good news, Lord. We ask for continued healing. Would everybody pray that God would save Isaac's eye and, and save his sight completely? Lord, in your mercy. And thank you for the recovery for Shirley Rankin. That she's, she gets to go home on Wednesday. Lord, it's been such a long time. We know you've been with her, but she's gone through so much. So we pray that she will have renewed strength and total recovery. Would everybody pray that Shirley would go home safely and that her health and strength would return. Lord, in your mercy. And Ben, Lord, you've been watching over him. What a trial this has been since his accident, so many things. But we thank you that he has praying, praying family, Lord, and that we've been able to pray for him. We thank you for this last surgery. We ask that it would be totally, completely successful and he, he would have recovery. Would everybody pray for total recovery for Ben? Lord, in your mercy. And then, Lord, I pray for our grandson, Josh Newman, and the devastating diagnosis. But you are bigger than any diagnosis, and we just ask for you to come into Josh's life again. He does know you. He is your child, for sure. And we ask that you would return his strength and give him healing. But everybody, please pray for healing and strength for Josh. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we pray for Israel because you have commanded us to. Because you said there's a blessing that goes with it. But not only that, these are your people, Lord. They are the, the children of Abraham. And we just pray protection for Israel. And we pray that many would turn to you. That they would become fulfilled Jews, messianic Jews, and come to know you in Jesus' name. Would everybody pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, in your mercy. And then we pray for our Sunday school, that, that many kids will turn out and pray for the teachers. Give them a special anointing this year as Sunday school starts. Would you all pray for our Sunday school? Lord, in your mercy. And we pray also, Lord Jesus, uh, for... Um, that's... Cadence. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's that's your daughter, your granddaughter's name, right? Cadence. I've forgotten that, Mark. I'm sorry. Cadence, little Cadence, is a little child, nine years old, I think, and she's just been diagnosed with diabetes and with all the things that go with learning and learning how to take care of herself, and and the parents also, and grandma also, where his daughter. So, Lord, we just put cadence in your hands, your loving hands. You love the children. You've told us that over and over how important the children are to you. So bless little cadence, and we ask that this care of her diabetes would go smoothly in Jesus' name. Would, would you each say a little prayer that cadence's uh, treatments would go well and she can adjust to the diabetes? And bless Grandma, too. Lord, in your mercy. And then thank you for Angie and all she's done for our church in so many ways, Angie. Happy birthday to you. So, Lord, we just say, bless Angie. Bless her for the work she's done. Continue to bless her on this special day, Thursday, and through the next year, in Jesus' name. Would you all say, ask God to give Angie special blessings. Lord, in your mercy. And then Jan, Lord, we give you Jan. She's been your servant for so long also. We just thank you that she's a member of our church. And we ask you to bless her on her birthday and bless her family as they're with her. Lord, in your mercy. And then special prayers for our nation as we struggle, as we struggle to find things. Lord, that we might just turn to your word when people question us, 
don't try to argue with them. Lord, help me not to argue. Help me just to turn them to the word and say, well, this is what it says in God's word that our nation might once again be founded on your principles. Would everybody say a prayer for our nation? Lord, in your mercy. And as we talked, Lord, about the people in Jerusalem who don't yet know the Messiah, we pray for people all over the earth. We pray for missionaries in Mexico and everywhere that are spreading your word because you said it must be spread to all nations, Lord. So we pray for the unbelievers, and we pray that, that the Spirit would move upon them to bring them into your kingdom. We ask this in your name and for your glory, Jesus. Would everybody say a prayer for the unsaved, that they might know Jesus? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Did you miss one? No. Are you going to do the Lord's Prayer? Oh, yes. We need to do the Lord's Prayer, she said. We need to ask his final blessing on it. <laughs> uh, let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And this is day, our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen okay all right and one more thing uh, when we do the offering this morning there will be a special place in the back for an offering for Todd's mission in in Mexico and I ask you all to be generous for this important mission. Uh, we'll do a responsive reading today and you can find it in your bulletin and it's from Romans 10 one of my favorite books. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved. Scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing riches on all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I'm going to ask a couple ushers to come up for
seated. And Jim will do the scripture reading followed by a hymn, and then Pastor Buck will come up during the hymn and follow through. Yes. So Jim will follow, and then we'll have a hymn, and Pastor Buck then will uh, give us a message for today. Good morning. I'll be reading this morning from the New American Standard Bible. The Old Testament lesson is from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 11 to 20, and that can be found on page 182 in your pew Bible. For this commandment which I command you today is not too difficult for you, nor is it out of reach. It is not in heaven that you should say who will go up to heaven for us to get it for us and make us hear it, that we may observe it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say who will cross the sea for us to get it for us and make us hear it, that we may observe it. But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may observe it. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to possess it. But if your heart turns away and you will not obey, but are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today, that you shall surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land where you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess it. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants, by loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice, and by holding fast to him for this For this is your life and the length of your days, that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. The Gospel reading this morning is from John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18, found on page 915 of your pew Bible. Please stand if you're able. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and is not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my Father. Here ends the readings.
I'm back again. It's good to be back with you. You have a beautiful sanctuary here. It, uh, I'm just really praise you for the way it was put together and all the seating and stuff. Thank you, Carol, Carol for leading today. Uh, Todd, as I was looking at that, as you were sharing today about that, about praying, uh, the enemy was uh, across the street. And then I saw that uh, tomb and you were in darkness. But prayer, there's power in prayer. And God rolled that stone away. That darkness was gone. So thankful that we have a God who watches over us, that he never sleeps or he never slumbers. Interesting how God speaks to us through putting these messages together. Here, Several weeks ago, I was doing a devotional, and uh, Pastor Tom had called me to fill in. And I was doing a devotional, and I was reading in Revelation, in uh, chapter 1, where uh, John is on Patmos, a very uh, lonely island, because of his preaching of Jesus. Uh, they feared for him, so they stuck him on this, this island. And John was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. And he heard behind him this loud voice, a great voice that sounded like trumpets. And we'll jump down to verse 11. Then Jesus said to John, write down on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Myrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. As I continued on with my reading of God's word, I read chapters 2 and 3, what John had written down about each of the churches on the scroll. To the church in Ephesus, you have forsaken your first love. To Smyrna, extremely hard to uh, live in as a Christian in that place, a lot of persecution, People were being thrown into jail or killed, so a lot of them were falling away. Pergamon, they continued to worship idols, other gods. There was no repentance. Thyatira, sexually immoral. Pornification, non-married people living together. To Sardis, a reputation of being alive as a Christian, but you are, Jesus said, you are dead. Philadelphia, a faithful remnant, but very weak and very complacent. Laodicea, Jesus said, I know your deeds, but you are neither hot or cold spiritually. When I got done reading about the seven churches, <clears throat> I noticed eight words from God that were at the end of each church's description. He who has an ear, let him hear. And in each church's description with these eight words, I think Jesus was telling them, you people are going through the motions of the church but you're not listening, you're not hearing to the word of God and applying them to your lives. One commentary said it is clear that the message and warning to these churches were for that day, but as just as applicable and relevant to all believers in churches today. A little background of our text today, too, in Matthew 13, 1 through 2, the same day Jesus went out to the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. No room in the house. More, more people were coming to listen, coming to take part. And in this parable, and in this chapter, there are seven, seven parables. And Jesus is going to interpret 
this parable that I'm going to share with this morning. So I'm going to read from Matthew 13, 18 through 23. And shall we stand? Matthew 13, 18 through 23. In Jesus' name. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. This is Jesus speaking. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on the rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on the good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your words. God, apply them to our lives today that we might uh, go from these walls and, and use them in our lives. Help us to be that light of Jesus as we go out into our communities and to our friends and neighbors. Lord, we want to just hear today from you what you have to say to us. In thy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now Jesus interprets the scripture for them. The sower being the, the word of God, and the soil represents the people's heart or the listener. And I believe there are four names and four responses to the gospel that the hearers heard that day. The first here I've named the careless hearer. Verse 19. When anyone who hears a message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. This careless or these careless hearers who care less about what God's word said. These people make no effort, no effort at all to understand the teaching and the preaching of his word. They are not concerned about their spiritual lives or their relationship with the Savior. They aren't even concerned if they were to die that they would be in hell for eternity. And yet today there may be a careless listener here who listens to the message of God's word. But it might mean nothing to them. They may have an attitude of not caring. I really don't need that church stuff. It's just foolish. It's foolish. They could care less. And they reject the gospel. In 19b, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. Satan likes to come and distract us, confuse us, make us busy, compromise on God's word, make it fit to our, our sin. Well, my sin isn't as great as hers. My sin isn't as great as his. Satan likes to be working our lives to make us be procrastinators. Too busy with our cell phones, too busy with TV programs, shopping, putting devotions, putting Sunday school, putting youth night on the back burner. Satan likes to snatch our time. One commentary said, Satan does not wait until the sowing or the preaching is done. 
Satan snatches away God's word while some are still sitting in the pews. Another distraction for the careless here, here is the fear of what others might think if they become a Christian. One pastor said to a young hearer that had just asked Jesus into their life, you'll get over it. Sad. I pray that that student never, never gets over the life of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 3, the gods of this world, Satan has blinded the minds of the listener so that they might not see the light of the gospel. Matthew 15, 14, if a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Satan likes to blind the hearer to a false hope. Evangelist Charles Spurgeon once said, It is a tragedy that some listeners in the pews are careless listeners only. They are no more likely to go to heaven than the pews that they are sitting in. And it speaks to us, doesn't it? The next here I've named is a superficial here. Verses 20 through 21. The one who received the seed that fell on the rocky places is a man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. A superficial here listens only to the things of God on the surface. They don't take time to dig into the scriptures, to study them. So thankful for your Bible studies that you're starting. Those small groups. Small groups is where I came to Christ. Came to a living relationship with Jesus Christ because the group was praying for me and I was seeking God's will. Visiting with a friend here a while back about studying God's word. I told him the word of God is like gold. You've got to dig for it. You've got to dig into the scriptures. Spend time in them. James 1, 23, anyone who listens to the word of God but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away immediately and forgets what he looks like. The superficial here doesn't take long to forget what they heard. Revelations 3.1, God said, I know your deeds. I know your reputation of being spiritually alive, but you are spiritually dead. This year doesn't have any root, any spiritual root. When troubles come, when temptations come, they fall for them, or they quickly fall away. Next, I've called this one the worldly here, verse 22. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is a man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. This listener doesn't keep up with weeding the garden. You know, some of you have gardens, big gardens. If you don't keep up pulling those weeds, what happens? They overtake the garden, don't they? They slow the population of the fruit down. The weeds of unconfessed sin, continuing in your sin, will keep your relationship with Jesus Christ being broken. The worldly here loves the things of this world. The worries of life, deceitfulness of wealth, choke out what they have heard. A devotional reads, 
a well-known pastor was invited to dinner in the home of a very wealthy man in Texas. After the meal, the host led him to a place where they could get a good view of the surrounding area. Pointing to the oil wells, the landscape he boasted, 25 years ago I had nothing. Now as far as you can see, it's all mine. Looking in the opposite direction at his sprawling fields of grain, he said, that's all mine too. Turning east towards huge herds of cattle, he bragged, they're all mine too. Then pointing to the west and the beautiful forest, he exclaimed, that too is all mine. The wealthy man paused, expecting the pastor to compliment him on his great success. The pastor, however, placing one hand on the man's shoulder and pointing heavenward with the other, simply said, How much do you have in that direction? The man hung his head and confessed, I never thought of that. Although this wealthy Texan had succeeded in making money, he had failed to prepare for eternity. Finally, the receptive here in verse 23. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was shown. This one I've called the receptive here. This receptive here hears the Holy Spirit's calling to come to the Savior. They have confessed their sins. They are born again. They are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. They have claimed Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The receptive here has dedicated their life to Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. Jesus Christ changes the listener to be with him, to have faith in him. I think the receptive here that I heard that day in the Bible study a lot of times I was running from God. Didn't want anything to do with him. But his word fell on, on me. Convicted me of my sinful state. Convicted me of my wrongdoings. And cleansed me by the blood of Jesus. This receptive here represents good soil. The Christian life is producing much spiritual fruit, putting action into what they have heard from God's word and applying what they've heard to themselves and their daily lives. Jesus said in Matthew 7:20, by their fruit you will recognize them. Forty years ago I came to Christ. Would I have said 40 years ago, would I be up here in front of you? By no means. God answers prayer. He answered prayer in my life, and he'll answer prayer in your life. I was really all four of these soils. I was a careless here. Didn't give a rip about it. I was superficial, I heard. Went to church off and on, heard, but it didn't take root. Worldly, I did get worldly. I wanted the things of this world to replace a lot of things in my life. But finally I became that receptive here started bearing fruit, starting telling people about Jesus, 
started loving people, started to understand people. I was in the bank for 35 years. God called me into ministry. He said, I want you to serve a church in Madison temporarily. Two and a half years was a temporary. You'll be surprised. God says, I know the plans that I have for you. So maybe you're one of these listeners today. I pray that you're on good soil. That when you've heard the God, the good words of Jesus Christ, that you've come to relationship with him. Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Do you hear his voice today? I pray that you do. I pray that you would listen to his voice and apply it to your lives because he's there to help you along. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your words today. Sometimes, Lord, we fall into one of these categories. But we know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We know that your promises are true. We know in Psalms it says you never sleep or never slumber. We can come to you any time of the day or night. Lord, thank you for the privilege of being able to share today. Thank you for Todd and Barb, for their ministry in those areas that really become uneasy. I think of other missionaries too. They've been called into many parts of the world. Protect them, Lord. Help them to be that light of Christ. Thank you for the privilege of, again, of speaking your word. In thy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Buck, for that, ser for that sermon. We appreciate you being here with us. Uh, we're going to be closing with our closing hymn, and then I want you to know that as we sing the doxology, Pastor Buck and Pastor Todd and your wives, would you go to the back of the church so that people can greet you as, as they leave? So uh, let's close with the, the final song, Then I Then Shall Live.
forward that we do the doxology and Todd and, and Pastor Buck uh, will be greeting you in the back. Let's close with the benediction taken from the book of Numbers 6. And the Lord says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.